The 90s gave us a bounty of subversive, ahead of their time animated shows that never quite achieved the success they deserved. Rosebud. Yes, Rosebud Frozen Peas. Full of country goodness and green penis. Wait, that's terrible. And that makes unfortunate sense. Without digital outlets like YouTube and Netflix, a series had to sink or swim based on its mainstream appeal in a primetime TV slot. There was no room for risk, so TV executives had little tolerance for anything that audiences didn't immediately love, even if the show was critically acclaimed. It stinks. It stinks. It stinks. That setup was especially frustrating for fans of The Critic, which only saw two seasons despite being stacked for success. Tell us about your film, Mr. Wonka. We have a fascinating kind of candy that turns wicked children into giant blueberries. Hmm, where did it go? I have no idea. The series starred the distinctive voice of SNL great John Lovitz as the title character, Jay Sherman. And its head writers were The Simpsons showrunners, Al Jean and Mike Reese. Even bro comedy legend Judd Apatow was in the writer's room, and Hans Zimmer composed the theme. So it had to be amazing, right? Well, it was. But that didn't help it succeed. Oh. On this TV, I do believe his nose is bigger than my foot. Look, see? Isn't that incredible? Part of the problem was that in those days, animation was still seen as a medium for kids. And whereas shows like The Simpsons had a host of relatable child characters for audiences to latch onto, most young people couldn't relate to a balding, sarcastic, middle-aged curmudgeon who hated himself. I guess I was ahead of my time in finding him so likable. Well, whoever said this studio was totally lacking in artistic taste? You did on your show last week. <laughs> <laughs> How awkward. Critics may have loved The Critic, but ironically, the show itself was about a critic who hated nearly everything, and 90s audiences just weren't ready to bask in that kind of negativity. The truth is, no one likes a critic, because most people are ill-equipped to deal with criticism. But if you struggle with critics in your life, whether it's a dismissive boss or parents who use hurtful comments to keep you in line, there are some strategies you can use to overcome them. So let's look at ways that you can cope with criticism. First and most importantly, don't get defensive when somebody criticizes you. Uh, I'm sorry, boss. It's clear you've worked long and hard to come up with these mind-bogglingly stupid ideas! If even a bland, passive remark feels like criticism, getting defensive will likely blow it out of proportion. Instead of moving on, the person who criticized you will only dig in their heels to prove that they're right. So, instead, try the tactic of fogging whenever you feel attacked. Fogging means accepting the parts of the criticism that are true while not responding to whatever is inaccurate. In other words, you accept it without caring and move on. What did you think of my script? It was excrement. Did you say it was excellent? That might sound like you're dropping your guard to let a bully take cheap shots, but no bully wants to pick on somebody who doesn't care that they're being picked on. When you put up a wall of fog, the stones that your critics throw will pass right through without doing damage, and the critic will usually see how futile it is to throw them. I read it in the tub. I want to get to know the man who wrote it. Really? Well, shrimp gives me gas. That's enough. Wait, there's more! Now, that might sound easy on paper, but it's hard to control your emotions in the face of criticism. That's why the second strategy is to simply breathe whenever you're dealing with a critic. Getting emotional will only make things worse, so breathe to calm your tension so you can respond rationally. Our last film tonight is a sequel to Little Women, Little Men. Look at this, I'm here with the Keebler Elves. Ma, oh, you seem awfully hostile. You should see a shrink. Ah, <laughs> shrink! Oh, you think I'm funny? Do I amuse you? Do I make you laugh? And as hard as it might sound, Responding rationally to criticism means you have to actually listen to it. Winnow out whatever truths your critic might be sharing and acknowledge them. Don't immediately fight back 
and don't respond with criticism of your own. You will only end up in an arms race of insults. You also don't have to respond in the moment. It's perfectly fine to tell someone that you're going to think about what they said and then just end the conversation. Listen, I can take any criticism in the world, but I want an honest opinion. Honest opinion, honest opinion. Hmm. Hey look, they're washing both Derek like a horse. But whatever you do, you do not have to put up with insults. Valid criticism is one thing, insults are another. If a critic says something that genuinely hurts, tell them that you're happy to listen to whatever it is that's upsetting them, but you insist that they treat you with respect. Six of these plastic burgers are missing. Now, if only Jay Sherman had used some of these tactics when dealing with the critics in his life, maybe he would have gone a little easier on Home Alone 5. <gasps> we left Kevin home alone, and he's only 23! Ah! What do you guys think? What ways have you dealt with criticisms before in the past? And what critiques do you have for us? Let us know in the comments.